We all know what killer whales look like. I think I need to explain this. There are millions of videos featuring them on the internet. But what are these killer whales really like? Are they good-natured animals? Or are they bloodthirsty, ferocious predators? They are huge. Their body length can reach up to 10 meters, while they can weigh about nine tons. They seem like cute and affectionate animals to us, but is this really true? And how did they earn such a formidable name as killer whales? Ancient Spanish whale hunting sailors often observed killer whales attacking larger whales, which the Spaniards later began to call them balenas asesinas, or whale killers. Due to the incorrect translation from Spanish of the name asesina balenas, whale killer, into English, they received such a bloodthirsty name as killer whales. If you have other ideas about why they were given such a bloodthirsty name, write about it in the comments. We will definitely read them. A typical family of killer whales consists of an adult female, her adult sons and calves of different ages. Several related families can unite and form a single pod in which all individuals maintain friendly relations. At the same time, mating occurs only between individuals from different pods, which allows to avoid inbreeding. Everything is like with people, isn't it? Killer whales are just damn smart. They have an incredibly high level of intelligence. To understand how high their level of intelligence is and how strong they are as hunters, suffice it to say that they always have a well thought out plan for each hunt, depending on who exactly they will hunt. Killer whales almost always hunt in groups. They choose a specific strategy for each victim. They can afford to attack any sea creature regardless of its size. They can even attack a blue whale. They say that this is the largest creature that has ever existed on our planet. Whales reach up to 33 meters in length and their weight reaches 200 tons. An impressive size, isn't it? To hunt such a giant killer whales can form huge schools, including more than 70 individuals. When attacking a whale, everything happens according to a cruel but working scheme. Orcas take turns ramming, biting, and pulling the whale by the pectoral fins and, as a rule, exhaust their prey. Even despite the difference in size, it is difficult for whales to fight off such an attack. Just imagine that dogs bite you all over your body at the same time, and then they also try to drown you. Killer whales block the whale's breathing hole, and after an attack that can last for several hours, the exhausted giant drowns. Often even sperm whales are attacked. Despite their sharp teeth, they prefer not to mess with killer whales. Killer whales mainly eat only the tongues of whales and leave the rest of the carcass to scavengers, which are sharks, as they say. Bon appetit. Killer whales are considered the only enemies of white sharks. What happens if a shark manages to bite first? Rows of sharp teeth can pierce even the thickest skin. I think this is a species that can win this battle if it attacks first. But killer whales use a different tactic to hunt sharks. Killer whales sneak up unnoticed and deliver powerful blows to the side of the shark, immobilizing it. And then, as if having some knowledge of shark biology, turn the prey over. This disorients and paralyzes it, then drowns it, and with surgical precision, rips out the liver and leaves the rest of the carcass. So who can beat a killer whale? Maybe you know? Write in the comments, and we will definitely read them. Killer whales are famous gourmets. Humpback whale calves are one of their favorite treats. To hunt whale calves, killer whales use the most elegant hunting method, which is the abduction of baby whales. For this, they do not noticeably sneak up on the female. By choosing the right moment, they imitate the mother's behavior. They put the calf on their back and carry it in the flow of the wave. The young and naive cub willingly swims with them, not understanding his terrible fate.
Killer whales have many hunting methods, but this incredible method particularly amazed me. Seals often climb out of the water onto ice flows to rest. They are not in any danger there, which means they can rest peacefully rocking on the waves. But for killer whales, this is not a problem. Several predators line up in a row and accelerate, and then break right in front of the ice flow, creating a wave that simply washes away the seal. And the killer whales only have to catch the seal in the water. Water, however, it often happens that the victim manages to climb back onto the ice. But this is not a problem. The attack of a huge wave is repeated again and again until the victim ends up in the water and is caught. Often dolphins are attacked despite their excellent speed and agility. They also cannot escape from killer whales, as you probably already understood. Killer whales are very smart and ruthless predators, and not a single sea creature can feel safe when killer whales are nearby. In addition to all their other qualities, killer whales are known for their rather strange playfulness. They play like real psychos. No, seriously, look at this. Instead of just eating the poor seal, killer whales play with it as if it were a ball, tossing it over and over again. Sometimes it is a kind of training just to maintain their killer skills. Sometimes it is a demonstration for the younger generation. And sometimes the game remains just a game. Of course, the poor seals suffer the most. Even on land, they can't feel safe. And what can you call this method of hunting? When a killer whale almost jumps onto the shore to grab its lunch and runs away, as if other prey in the sea is not available to it, for which it is not necessary to break the laws of nature and go on land. Maybe you have ideas? Write them in the comments and we will definitely read them. In the wild, killer whales behave very friendly towards humans. Killer whales are not afraid of people and even willingly contact us. So far, there has not been a single case of a wild killer whale attacking a person with a fatal outcome. But on the internet, there is a video where a killer whale attacks a person on a kayak. Maybe you know something about this case. Write to us in the comments. We will be very grateful to you. But you can't say about the killer whales living in aquariums that they are such cute and good-natured creatures. The best and most horrific example is Tilikum, a trained male involved in at least three human murders. The first was Kelty Barn, who slipped and fell into the pool where Tilikum and two other killer whales were. They threw the girl between themselves with their jaws, submerged her in the water, and did not let her float to the surface. Kelty Byrne drowned. The second victim was a man who snuck into the pool where Tilikum was after the aquarium was closed. And in this attack of the killer whale, everything went without casualties, thanks to an experienced trainer. During the performance, the killer whale grabbed the leg of its trainer and dragged him under the water. The fight between the trainer and the killer whale lasted more than 15 minutes. He tried to free his leg, but the killer whale held him not giving him the opportunity to surface. After being underwater for about a minute, the killer whale surfaced with him, but did not release the leg from its jaws. The trainer calmed her down by stroking her back for several minutes. Then the killer whale dragged him under the water again, as if realizing that the man could suffocate. The killer whale soon surfaced. After some time, the wounded trainer still managed to free his leg and successfully get out of the water. But the most terrible and bloody was the third attack on a person according to eyewitnesses. A killer whale named Tilikum grabbed trainer Don Brancho by the hair and pulled her underwater at the very beginning of the show. In front of the amazed audience, the pool staff tried to distract the killer whale and save their colleague. Tilikum played with the victim as if she were a toy, furiously tormenting Brancho underwater. Only 20 minutes later, colleagues managed to distract the killer whale and get the torn body of Brancho, who had numerous injuries, but unfortunately she was already dead. Until now, the aquarium staff cannot determine exactly what prompted the killer whale to attack the trainer. 
There is an assumption that Tilikum took her hair tied in a ponytail for a toy, and another opinion is that after 26 years of being in captivity, the killer whale's hunting instinct awakened. But despite all these incidents with Tilikum, there was good training, and soon he returned to performances again. Coaches were forbidden to be in the pool during Tilikum's performances. After such visits, the killer whales no longer seem so soapy and good-natured to us. We forget that they have their own wild habits. Wherever they are, they are predators that have no equal in the ocean. They are strong and smart. But you know that perhaps from Tilikum's point of view, all the victims were also part of the game and we are just like seals to them. Perhaps you have your own thoughts on this matter. Write about them in the comments. This is very important to us. We will definitely read them. Tilikum died in 2017 on January 6th. The cause of death was a bacterial infection. At that time, he was 36 years old. See you later, friends, in the next video.